Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Um, let, me get into, let me get into this uh, super chat from Brian Quick, and then you can respond to, to that, and then I'll let... Um, Actually, first I'll let I'll let uh, I'll let Mike ask his question, but let me get the super chat. Brian Quick gave us uh, five bucks here. He says, "Is Glock going to release the Model Forty Six? Do uh, what is this? Is Glock going to release the Model Forty Six? Do Gen Five compensated models do a classic line with Gen One Seventeen and Gen Two Nineteen? So there's a whole bunch of questions in there. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Real fast to skip yeah. that. No, there probably won't ever be any retro Gen 1, Gen 2s because uh -huh. we have to get a, a molding machine. So the molding machine that we used for the frames, mm -hmm. a molding machine costs almost a million bucks. Okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, so they actually over in Austria, they actually, you know, we got rid of all that stuff. So, so uh, they got rid of the mold for the Gen 1 Glock. Yeah. So every time we change the generation, the frame. We have to get a new mold for it, so we have the Gen Five now. So yeah, why isn't that Gen? Okay, so that Gen One got, uh, mold should be in storage. Should, that's history. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, you know, they never going back. Go forward. Yeah, yeah they never going <laughs> okay. back. So I don't think. Damn. I mean, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm just one of the little Indians. You know what I'm saying? Right, you know, right, so. right. Yeah, uh, I know there's some companies that have that philosophy that they're never going to go go back to make old stuff. Um, you know, if you want the old stuff, you have to buy the old stuff that already exists. I think Rolex has that same philosophy with watches. They're not going to go back and make an old Rolex. But what's great about our system is that the very first Glock, we still make all those parts. So I can mm -hmm. take a lot of the stuff from today that's being made and run it in my very first Glock. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. so as long as I got the same model, same caliber, and same generation... All the parts are 100% compatible. Unlike some of the other manufacturers out there, when they make a new gun, the old gun is just obsolete because they stop making okay. parts well, for it. If it breaks, you just screw. Right. You know. Now, with, with, with the ex with one ex well, at least one exception that I know, my uh, Glock 43 is not compatible with a 43X. Yeah, well, all the parts inside are oh. compatible. Oh, okay. Yeah, all the parts are, in are compatible. Now, oh. yeah, the 43X has a different frame, mm -hmm. but. Uh, the uppers will, you know, you could take your 43, if you bought a 43X, mm -hmm. the uppers will be, they swap out. And the only thing different between the 43X, other than the frame, of course, as far as parts, uh, the 43X uses a different magazine catch, a mm -hmm. different magazine, and a different slide stop lever. Everything else is identical. Oh, okay. Parts and everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. And and okay. All right. So let me not let me get let me let Mike get his question in here because we could deep dive into any of these things. Mike, what's your question? Yes, my question was earlier. You had said um, mentioned something about shooting the um, Gen three, four, and five. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, what's the big difference between the generations and how does it apply to the firearm? Yeah. Okay. Well, the generation three uh, came around in the United States in about nineteen uh, nineteen ninety eight. Uh, so what we did when Gen 3 came out, we added finger grooves because when the guns were first designed and made in the U.S., they didn't have finger grooves and they didn't have a light rail attachment. So as as time changed and, you know, people started wanting to hang lights on the guns and stuff like that, uh, we added finger grooves to the frame and we added a light rail attachment to the frame. So Gen 4 came around in 2010. The difference between the Gen 3 and the Gen 4, internally, everything is pretty much identical. Mm -hmm. uh, a few of the major changes between 3 and 4 was that we went to a, a dual recoil spring. So we went to a dual recoil spring. The Gen, uh, Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, they all use a single spring. So when Gen 4 came around, we went to a dual recoil spring that we had already been using in our baby Glock guns, the G26 and the G27, which are the, the micro, the, uh, the subcompact pistols, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, when the Gen 4 came around, we went to an enlarged reversible magazine catch that we could flip it over to the other side. So now on the Gen 4 gun, we had a, a, a magazine catch that was three times the size of the Gen 3 magazine catch, so it, was, it had more surface area, which means I could get to it better, OK, and I could also flip it over to the other side if I wanted to. And then the Gen 4, what we did, we reduced the frame. So the Gen 4 was made in what we call the 
SF configuration. I call it sexy frame, but it stands for short frame. So what oh. we did, <laughs> well, yeah, what we did, we simply, we simply reduced the trigger reach from front to rear about two millimeters. So we made the trigger reach short on the Gen 4 frame, and then we also had attachable back straps. We have a, we had a, a medium and a large back strap, regular back strap, and then we had a medium and a large beaver tail back strap. So the medium back strap would add two millimeters to the frame, and then the large back strap would add four millimeters to the frame. So those were some of the some of the cosmetic differences between uh, the Gen 3 and Gen 4. Now people say, well, Scotty, which gun was better, the Gen 3 or Gen 4? Uh, the Gen 4 has some additional features that made it more appealing to most people from based on my experience because it had it also had the rough textured frame. Uh, one of the things that people always did with the Gen, Gen 3s and Gen 2s was stipple the frame. They made it even more aggressive. Well, when the Gen 4 gun came out, we had what we call the RTF grip texture. That stands for rough textured frame, so we gave the gun a very aggressive grip. 360 degrees all the way around so now if i'm in a real world type situation my hands are sweaty bloody muddy whatever i can still hang on to my pistol mm, okay very and cool. then the gen 5 of course the gen 5 came around in 2017 now the gen 5 in my opinion is the cream of the crop uh and i always tell folks that to appreciate the Gen 5, you have to understand what we did to it. You know, we've done some things with this pistol that we've never done within the history of the company. Uh, we removed the finger grooves, first off. Uh, a lot of people liked them, a lot of people didn't. So uh, what we found with people with bigger hands, with big old fat fingers, sometimes those finger grooves could make you put your hand in positions that you didn't actually want them. So uh, we just removed them. You know, I can take them or leave hmm. them, but I actually I must say I, I do like the guns without them. But with them on there, they don't, they don't bother me. So the Gen 5 has no finger grooves. Uh, it has the exact same grip texture as the Gen 4, the rough textured frame. The Gen 5 is also, it's actually, uh, it's made in the same SF configuration. So the trigger reach on the Gen 4 and Gen 5 is identical. And then the Gen 5 has the same attachable back straps, the, uh, the standard medium and large. And then we have the beaver tail medium and large back straps. But the real beauty of the Gen 5 is down off on the inside. We went to a ambidextrous slide stop lever, brand new design. We went to a, uh, a, a, a different firing pin safety design, a different firing pin design. We went to a different trigger design. The trigger design that we used for 30 years in the U.S. was an s cold spring, and that spring stretched. So we had, it had two hooks, one hook to the trigger mechanism housing, the other hook attached to the... Uh, to the trigger bar itself and that spring stretched okay now we use a compression spring the gen 5 now has a compression spring so does the slimline models 42 43 43x and the g48 hmm. and then the gen 5 guns uh has the gmb barrel that stands for glock marshman barrel and that barrel is a true marshman barrel guaranteed to uh uh, they do under two inches at, at 25 yards and under four at 50. That is an absolute fact. As a matter of fact, I went up to the FBI and did some testing up there. And uh, even after 20,000 rounds, man, they didn't see no change in accuracy. So the Gen 5 uh, Is barrel, that regardless of who's shooting it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. Uh, but, but that barrel in the Gen 5 guns, man, it'll do everything a high dollar 1911 will do that's a fact and it's not the knock on any other you know but mm -hmm. that that barrel man that the glock marshman barrel we make our own mandrels and all these things man for our stuff everything about the glock system you know even if i wasn't a glock guy and i understand the people that's listening have to take what i say with a grain of salt because i work for glock but i carried glocks a long time before i even went to glock to work all right and uh one of the things that i love is that everything about the glock pistol when you own a glock Everything about that pistol is made and controlled by us. We mm -hmm. don't outsource anything. So when you run into some of these other pistols, a lot of that stuff is, is not controlled by them. So when they got a problem, they got to try to track it down and get these people to respond, yada, yada, yada. When we have a problem, we know exactly where it came from. We can fix it and we can deal with it. We make all of our own springs. Everything about our gun is made and controlled by us. That's one of the things that I love about the company. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, I can, go ahead. Yeah, I, I was going to say, when I was in the military, um, stationed down there at Fort Benning, one of my buddies, he had a Glock, and he had told me one day he was going to the Glock store, and I told him I'll see him when he get back because I had something else I had to take care of. I couldn't ride with him. But when he went up there, he 
pretty you were just you were being a hater. You were being a hater, Mike. They, Did you no, no, no. He was explaining to me like, yeah, I heard what you said about yeah. being a hater, but I'm I not know. a hater. That's why you, you didn't know, go. That's why you didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I had other things I had to take care of. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but what he pretty much told me was they pretty much gave him a, a new gun. You know, like they replaced all his magazines. He bought his magazines in. They replaced the magazines for free. And they pretty much gave him a free gun because they looked at something and said something was wrong. The gun is kind of outdated, so we're just going to give you a new gun. And I was like, wow, that was pretty yeah. impressive. I mean, our customer service is second to none. If you got a great gun and crappy customer service, it's just a matter of time before people say, you know what, screw you, I'm out of here. And so, yeah, when you bring a gun to us, if that if something needs to be replaced, when that gun is serviced, when that gun it when you leave with it, you can rest assured that gun has been upgraded, it's been serviced, man, and it's good to go. So we pride ourselves off that as well. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.